Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my happy place. Today I'm going to be filming for week three of the My Happy Place sew along. And so in week one, I had shown you how to make these tomato pin cushions right here. And then last week, and that was that was here on my channel. And then last week on my blog, there was three more blocks. So that's the crochet hook block. And this is the sewing scissors block. And this is the knitting block. So I still haven't appliqued mine down, but that will happen. So that's week one and week two. And as I've said before in the beginning, I'm going back and forth. Um, it will be on my blog every week, the sew along, but some of the tutorials will be in video form. And so they'll be here on my channel. So always check in on my blog, which is Be In My Bonnet. And every Monday during this sew along, and then I will always link if I have a video, I'll you know put a link there that you can just link right here to my channel and watch it. So this week, for week three, we are doing the sewing machine block. So what I did was in my sew along guide, I took out page 18 and page 17, which this is the cutting. And already in the guide, we already have all the cutting and things like that. So you should have everything cut. Let me set that aside. And we're gonna be doing the sewing machine. So what I'm gonna do is set these up here and they'll kind of be a guide that I can reference and show you while I'm sewing but I do want to point out one thing so this right here is when I'm doing my piece blocks I always letter each piece and then down here you can see the letter so that you can see what size that is so here's s right here so you look up S, which is the sewing machine, and it's cut seven and a half by seven and a half. So here's the cutting for all of the sewing machine colors. Here's the background cutting. So there's always a guide of what you have. So this is broken down into like um, the puzzle pieces, which basically is what it's like to sew my picture blocks together are like doing a puzzle. And um, so you can see where everything goes. But I did want to point out that in the printing of this, I don't know if it's yet corrected on the guide, but see how you can see that there's some easy corner triangles there. It just doesn't show them sewn on there or that little piece sewn on there, but everything in the cutting is correct. Everything in this is correct. It just, for some reason, the printing missed off this little easy corner triangle and then the two here. But just so you know, we'll, we will be sewing those. And in case you're wondering why that didn't quite match up. All right. So what I've done is I've kind of got a head start. But here's all of the pieces for the block. So we've got the templates here. And even though this is all machine pieced, we are doing a tomato pin cushion, which I already showed you how to do. So we're doing that, and so that's what these fabrics are for. And then these two pieces right here are for these diamond shapes, the L12 and the L11, and that that is applique. So this is applique, and this is applique with the So Simple Shapes that we'll just applique on after the sewing machine is pieced. But I just wanted to point that out, that that's what this is for, and we all know how to do that so today we're just going to concentrate on the piecing of the machine so this is all of my background cutting right here that's listed here and i've got my so handy stickers on there that i've shown you before that i label everything so that i know after i've cut it that um you know this is piece m right here i've cut two of them one and a half by two and so i just stack two of them on top of each other with the same size pieces and I know those are M and that really helps as we get going along. And then these are all my pieces for the machine, the spool and you know, all of that other. So that's what I have going here. They're all labeled. And when I have 
pieces such as, let's see, these right here that have double numbers, I just simply do the letters and a number on those, okay, so that I can keep them all straight. Now, when I'm sewing this block together, as in any picture block, I just do it in sections. So you can see that this piece right here is all one section, and I have, I kind of have two blocks going so I can show you. So that's that bottom section right there, okay? And then this is another section that you need to do separately right here, and that's what that looks like. And then this section right here flips around this way, and that looks like this, which of course is that section right there you can see next to it. Okay, I've got that. I've got this center section right here, and I have to sew this to this before I can sew this bottom piece on. And so that's why we do it in sections. And then this is the last one right here. And then once I have this section finished, this section, this one, then I sew that bottom piece on, then I sew this on, and then the bottom section goes on. So that's how the block is done. So I'm gonna get set up here and we're gonna start sewing. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my pieces laid out here. We're gonna be doing this section first. So basically this section, this section, and then this section will all sew together. So I think we'll just go from the top down and you can see right here that I've got them all laid out kind of in order where they go and all labeled so it will go together easily and I won't uh, forget which piece goes to where and use the wrong measurement or anything. That's why I love my design boards and to label everything with my letters and so we can go from there. So I think I'm just gonna start with the spool. Let me slide this over here. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is take my D4 and sew these to each side. Now, I can use this by meaning I can just go ahead and sew that together, but since I already know that's a P, I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off and start putting them on there. But my stickers can be ironed on and sewn across, and then when you peel them off, it's not gonna leave a residue. But all I do is just lay that there. I'm going to be using my quarter inch seam allowance here so that I have an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. And let's see, let me see if my machine is turned on. It is not, hang on. There, I thought it was on because I usually have the light turned on, but I turn it off when I'm filming so there's not a glare. All right, so now I just sew across there you can pick something else up and sew so that you don't have to put, you know, scraps in between or to save thread and time, which is what I usually do. So I look at this piece here and I know that I need easy corner triangles there. And so I'm just gonna take this X on my A and put right there, line it up. And for my easy corner triangles, I'm going to Follow this center line, start on the corner, and follow this corner all along that line. And now that left that free to sew this on the other side. Now, since this is a square, I don't have to worry about, um, you know, which corner it's going on. I just know it needs to go on the bottom corner here and on the top. So now I can grab this other X piece. And so I just kind of lay a section out at a time and then just kind of work the whole board, whatever's on the board. 
Now, I know these pieces are small, but there's not gonna be a problem with pressing these seams to one side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press to one side and put the clamper on, okay? And while I'm waiting for that to cool down, I can see that I need on piece T, an easy corner triangle right here, sewn on that top corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Might as well take my sticker off first. And the trick to that is just make sure you have all of those lined up correctly, right sides together, and then just follow that corner after starting in the corner. And I can see from the photo what direction I need to sew that. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and run that scrap through here. So on the easy corner triangles, what I do is just trim those corners off. An approximate quarter inch seam allowance it does not have to be exact. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and press those to one side. This should be cooled off and nice and flat. I set the seams first and then press back. And then that's just one right there, so. Okay, so I'll let those cool for a minute and then I'll come back to this spool here. Now, on this one, I just realized that I did, did the stripe going up and down, but on this one, I did it sideways like thread. So it doesn't matter whichever you wanna do. I'm just gonna show you how to do this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and those should line up and sew those to the top and the bottom. And this is E5. And you need two of those. Now you can pin these if you want, but I just find that if I start sewing and have this line right here, I know that this is correct right here, so if this hangs over a little bit, by the time I'm finished, I can always trim that off because it's just a little bit of background. So that's not a big deal. You can always trim up your sections, you know, during each step if you need to. So I'm gonna do the same thing by starting because if I trim here, I don't wanna start here See what I'm saying? So I wanna make sure that I start right down here even with the bottom so that I can trim that up. And that just means my seam allowance was just a little bit smaller so that um, than a quarter of an inch. So now I can adjust accordingly, accordingly by uh, making sure that I pay more attention to that like um, maybe I went on this side of the blue line instead of in the center, which is what I usually follow is the center. So when I do this, I like to just kind of like trim that up. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because I cut these three and a half inches, then I know that's the correct measurement right there. So I know that this background piece is just a little bit longer than three and a half inches. You see that against the ruler? So I can go ahead and trim that little teeny bit off. So I'm gonna do that. And all I do is just flip that over so I can see that as a guide. And so it's just a little teeny piece, but now I know that it's gonna measure three and a half inches wide and it doesn't matter if this one's just a little bit wider than that one. It's just, it's not gonna matter when it's on the machine because it's the correct measurements. And then again, I can press this to one side as well. I don't have to press those open like I do with some smaller sections. I'll show you there is a part that I do press open 
later on another section. So I'll let you know about that. Okay, so that's that piece right there. I'm gonna go ahead and just put that back there into its place until I finish the spool part. And this, this square doesn't have any easy corner triangles on it or anything, this S, it just remains that way. Let's set these aside. Bring this A back over here. And you can see that we press A to S. These are both squares, so you don't have to worry about turning them correctly or incorrectly. And now where I'm sewing on my Seam So Easy guide here is right there directly on the line. Okay, so that should have given this enough time to cool. We'll put that up there. I'm going to go ahead and set those seams. And when I say set those seams, I just put the iron on top of it and see how it flattens them out and makes them smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and press towards the S because that is the least amount of bulk. Okay. And again, you can iron right over the stickers. It doesn't matter. They come right off and do not leave residue at all. See, not sticky. All right, so that can go there. And now I know that I can sew this section to this section, but I'm gonna work on this first. So I'm gonna put the G to this side. You can pin again if you want, but I just like to start and then I just kind of pull that fabric down and make sure it all lines up. And run it through the machine. And then before I iron, I'm gonna go ahead and sew E on this side. Okay, back over here to set the seams. This way, set it that way, and then I'm gonna press them both to the background away from the bulk, like this. And then I'll just put a clapper on there. If it's a little wider than that, that's why I have several here, so that I can cover the areas that I need to and let that cool. While that's cooling down, I'm gonna go ahead and take these two sections and sew them together. And then after that's cool, I'll sew this on top. Okay, so now I've got this section here. It looks like this section here. And I'm gonna set it aside and set up for another section. So I'll be right back. All right, so this is the section that I wanna do next. This one right here. Oh, I should have pulled that out from under here so you can see. Let's do that, let's switch that out. Or just maybe, whoops. Let's pin it up here. Hang on. And then we'll move that over there. 
All right, so what I did a little bit ahead of time, just to save some time, is see this piece right here and this piece right here. They all, grab my little stack of R's, they all take a little easy corner triangle on each corner with the R's. So I went ahead and sewed those on, sewed those on. So this is piece A1 that you sew four R's to, and this is piece W that you sew four R's to, and all of the directions are like this, how you, how you sew them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clip those off. And then I'm going to press towards the little triangles. We don't have to press that open. That's gonna be okay. And put those back. I'm gonna press those in, in just a minute. But I just kinda of wanted to show you the, the process of how I'm going to do this. So with this little section right here, now that this is sewn, I'm gonna press those open and then I can go ahead and sew M to the top and the other M to the bottom. I simply just have to sew these three pieces together for this. And then once I have that whole section together, I'm gonna press that open, by the way. That is the only part in this whole quilt block that I've pressed open. It's just this section right here when you sew this to this, just because it's very bulky there and has a lot of seams. So it's this seam right here that I'm pressing open. All of the others I'm just pressing towards the outside. Let me show you that again. Okay. And then once I get that little section sewn, I'm gonna sew this section on top of it, which is H. And then I can go ahead and sew this to those two, because you can see that that measures correctly. And then after O, B2 and the other O are sewn together, that measures the same. And so I'll sew that. So I'll have that whole section right there sewn together. And then I'll go ahead and add I onto the top. And I didn't grab that yet, but that's F. So let me grab that over here. Here's F and what I need to do with F, um, I can sew it on first and then add the easy corner triangle, but that takes the last X easy corner triangle down here on the bottom. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave those there, sorry now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sew, and then you can watch me sew, and I'll just speed it up a little bit so you can just see my process.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and press this and remove all the stickers and that's that section right there. And then I'll set up for the next section and I'll be right back. All right, so I got this whole section sewn together right here. And then the next section we're gonna work on is this one right here. <clears throat> and then this bottom piece right here, which I went ahead and sewed together already. It's not a hard section at all. You just sew V to Y, these two strips here. And then the two remaining um, end pieces the little end squares from the background, I just did easy corner triangles. So this is the last, last section that we'll sew on. So I'll just put that there. And then what we've got going on here are the pieces for this section. Now, we have one little section right here, this whole row that looks like this. that needs to be sewn onto the bottom of this before these two can go together. And so what I've done is because this is a, a Z piece and this is a Z piece, they're both Z pieces and they're both have a R easy corner triangle on them, just like this. Okay. So I went ahead and did that. So now I just have to trim them up and press them. Okay, so now I've got this whole top section done right here, and I just need to add this bottom section right here. 
Look how cute that is. Okay, so I'm gonna sew the bottom section on and then I'm going to sew up the two so Simple Shapes and do the tomato pin cushion and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna um, do the embroidery and put the buttons on and everything and then I'll show you a close-up picture in the end and then of course my picture will be on my blog too but you already know how to do that you already know how to use the light box to trace that on and these shapes are super easy to sew there's no trimming or anything so I'll just cut those and sew those and so I'm going to finish up that way and you'll see plenty of finishing photos on the blog and um, I'll also put the other blocks up on my design wall that we have done so far so that you can see everything together so far. So I hope you have enjoyed your time with me in my happy place today working on your happy place quilts and I will chat with you later.